Good morning. Uh, today we will start with the lecture session on electromagnetic field theory 18AE45 on with uh, numericals that is lecture number 9. Okay, we will practice more number of numer numericals uh, today in this uh, session. Okay. So first one is let us consider the region between a uh, cone of theta equal to alpha degree at V0 and the plane with theta equal to pi by 2 at v equal to 0 as shown in the figure find the electric field intensity okay so first we'll do that is del square v equal to 0 okay we know from laplace equation del square v equal to 0 okay so del square v is nothing but what 1 by r square sin theta dou by dou theta of sin theta dou v by dou theta equal to 0 okay integrate this with respect to theta okay integrating this with respect to theta what are we going to get it is sin theta dou v by dou, dou theta is equal to constant okay r dou v by dou theta is equal to c1 divided by sin theta okay integrating this with respect to theta again we will get it as v1 v equal to c1 okay. log tan theta by 2 plus c2 okay um, so v will be 0 at theta equal to pi by 2 okay and v will be equal to 0 uh, that is c1 into log of tan pi by 4 plus constant okay so by integrating twice and substituting the initial condition what is given in the problem we can find out these two constants c1 and c2 okay further doing at theta equal to alpha v equal to v naught we get v naught equal to c1 log tan alpha by 2 plus c2 okay so c1 will be v naught by log of tan alpha by 2 therefore v will be equal to v naught log tan theta by 2 divided by log tan alpha by 2 hence the field intensity will be equal to minus gradient of potential okay therefore it will be equal to minus 1 by r dou v by dou theta into a theta cap because since V is a potential of only theta, we get E equal to this. Okay. Hence, we get it as minus V naught divided by R sin theta into log of tan alpha by 2. Okay. So, this is nothing but the electric field intensity. So, what has been done in this problem is given a, a potential field, we are trying to find out the electric field intensity. Before that, by solving Laplace equation, okay. We are trying to find out the potential V. Further, we are finding the gradient of potential to find out the electric field intensity. Okay. So, we will take one problem here. Uh, this is a basic uh, problem of the first module. Given there are two points C in Cartesian system and point D in cylindrical system that is 5, 20 degree and minus 70 degree okay for part a find spherical coordinates of c okay we are converting this cartesian system into spherical coordinates okay how are we do, supposed to do this uh, if you know cartesian system you know the relation between cartesian to spherical system okay that is x y z how it will be related to r theta and phi okay where r can be written as root of x square plus y square plus z square okay and cos theta can be written as z divided by r so theta will be cos inverse of z by r okay so z is there divided by r is nothing but root of this x square plus y square plus z square that is there here 3.74 so theta will be cos inverse of that z divided by r is 1 divided by 3.74 cos inverse of 1 by 3.74 gives you 74.5 degrees okay how do you find phi phi is nothing but tan inverse of this y divided by x 2 by minus 3 gives you phi equal to uh, 145 146.3 degrees okay hence you are converting this Cartesian coordinates into spherical coordinates. Okay. Then 
uh, one more thing is part in this find the rectangular coordinates of d okay so now this is given spherical you have to get back the cartesian coordinates okay so you know the relation between this cartesian and the spherical system so you are converting uh, here you got in the part a cartesian to spherical here you will be converting spherical to cartesian the reverse one okay so this is left as assignment you can try out converting this spherical to cartesian where the answer has been given here okay then once you get this in cartesian is this that this coordinates in cartesian last part c is distance from c to d okay so to find the distance from one point to the another point both should be in cartesian coordinates okay so you got here this is c is already in cartesian d it is there in cartesian here the answer is there okay so find the distance between c and d so what should be done is minus 3 minus this x value 2 minus of minus this y value 1 minus of this value and respective squares under square root results in this distance 6.29. Okay. We'll take the next problem. It is transform the following vectors to spherical coordinates at the points given. Okay. It is 10 ax cap at point P. Okay. So point P coordinates are given. You have to convert this which is there in Cartesian into spherical. Okay. How do you convert Cartesian into spherical? This vector should be multiplied, taken a dot product with spherical that is AR cap, you will get the radial component. This vector dot product with AY, A theta cap results in theta component. Again this vector dot product with A phi cap results in Phi component okay the answer has been given here radial component theta component and the phi component okay so doing that and substituting the point p in this cartesian but there we may get r theta and phi so this cartesian coordinate should be converting to spherical and then substitute the value for theta phi and so on so you will get the answer in the spherical okay again a Cartesian vector to be converted into spherical 10 ay cap answer is given here. Write as an assignment and see whether you are getting the right answer for these three parts that is part A, part B and part C. Okay. Then we will take further next problem. There are three vertices of a triangle which are located at point A, point B and point C. Okay. Find vector rab cross product with vector rac okay what is vector rab it is minus 8 ax cap okay how are we finding this is point a to point b okay so it is minus 2 minus 6 so it will become minus 8 then 3 minus of minus 1 it will become 4 then minus 4 minus 2 which is nothing but minus 6 okay so this is a vector in cartesian point a to b Similarly, what is the vector from point A to C? It is from minus 3, minus 6, it will become minus 9. Then 1 minus of minus 1, it will become plus 2. Then 5 minus 2, it will become 3. Okay, this is RAC vector. Then we will find the cross product of these two vectors. Okay, so as you know, cross product can be written as first row will be unit vectors in a determinant. Second row will be the components of the first vector. It is minus 8, 4 and minus 6 here. And then third row is the component of the last vector. It is minus 9, 2 and the 3. Okay. By substituting this and finding this determinant, we are going to get this cross product. Okay. So here the answer is coming as 24ax cap plus 78ay cap plus 20az cap. Okay. So this is part A, the cross product, okay, which gives the area of something like two vectors, okay, the cross product of two vectors. Then what is part B? The area of a triangle, okay. So area of the triangle, how to find? It is half of this cross product results in area of a triangle, okay. So we'll find the magnitude of this. It is the 84.02. 
divided by 2 if you do it comes around 42 square units okay this magnitude divided by 2 will result in area of a triangle okay further what is part c part c is a unit vector perpendicular to the plane in which the triangle is located so where the triangle is located we have to find out the unit vector perpendicular to the plane okay what will happen here unit vector a n cap is r a b cross r a c divided by its magnitude okay hence the vector uh, we have this vector vector cross product is here divided by its magnitude magnitude is also there that is uh, 84.02 the magnitude is there just substituting here you will get the unit vector a n cap okay so that is this is the unit vector a n cap okay we will take the next um, problem it is um, for aluminium uh, conductor the conductivity is uh, sigma equal to 3.82 into 10 power 7 Siemens per meter and the mobility of electron mu e is given and the drift velocity is given find the current density and the electric field intensity okay so here we are trying to find out the current density and the electric field intensity where we know drift velocity is nothing but mobility of the electrons multiplied by the field intensity and current density is conductivity into field intensity where uh, the field intensity can be written as drift velocity divided by mu, mu e okay this vd divided by mu e so drift velocity is given here that is 5.3 to 10 power minus 4 and mobility of electrons is given 0 0.0014 just direct substitution so electric field intensity will result as 3.79 into 10 power minus 1 volt per meter okay where current density j is sigma into electric field intensity which will result as 3.82 into 10 power 7 into 3.79 into 10 power minus 1 so much of ampere per meter square okay this is the current density okay we'll take the next problem it is uh, Find the total current in a circular conductor of radius 4 mm if the current density varies according to current density it is 10 power 4 by R ampere per meter square. Okay. So current density is given for a circular conductor of radius R 4 mm. Okay. So for this we have to find out the current okay so current over a crossing a particular surface area can be written as surface integral j dot ds vector okay so it will become integral phi 0 to 2 pi r between 0 to 0 0.004 10 power 4 by r that is nothing but current density multiplied by the area so what is area here area is the constant z okay let us consider here for a constant z so it will become r dr into d phi okay so here r and r will get cancelled so dr integration is nothing but r and r limit is 0 0.004 minus 0 okay and d phi integration is 2 pi sorry phi and the limit is 2 pi minus 0 okay hence it results as 80 pi amperes Further, uh, given a uh, current density J vector is equal to 10 power 3 by R square cos theta into A theta cap ampere per meter square. This is in spherical coordinates. Okay. Find the current crossing the conical strip of theta equal to pi by 4 and R between 0 0.001 to 0 0.089 meter. Okay. So, what is the solution here? It here the current density is in theta direction okay what is the current crossing through that surface we have to find okay since current is given in theta current density then current the differential surface area for a constant theta should be considered okay what is differential surface area for a constant theta it will be 
R sin theta dr into d phi. Okay, for a constant theta, it is in spherical coordinate system. Differential surface area for a constant theta is R into sin theta dr into d phi. So, you can cancel 1 R with 1 R. It will become 1 by R. So, it will become 10 power 3 log of R where R varying from 0 0.001 to 0 0.0. 8, okay and substituting this limit and phi value as 0 to 2 pi so d phi integration is nothing but phi and substituting this value we get it as j current will be equal to 1.38 into 10 power 4 amperes okay so this is just an integration and taking a differential surface area for a constant theta Further, we will consider the next problem that is number 8. Current density in a certain region is given as J vector equal to 5 by R AR cap plus 10 by R square plus 1 AZ cap ampere per meter square. Okay. Find the total current crossing the surface Z equal to 3 R less than 6 in AZ cap direction. Okay. So this is a problem again finding the current I but now the current is crossing in Z cap direction. But in the however in the problem J vector is given a radial component and the Z component. Okay. But when you are trying to find the current which is crossing along AZ direction you have to consider only this Z component. Okay. Because if you do AZ dot AZ it is 1. But AZ dot AR is 0. Hence, part A current I will be equal to surface integral J dot DS. So, surface integral J dot DS into AZ cap. Okay. So, you will get only this. So, 10 by R square plus 1. And differential surface area for a constant Z is R D R D phi. Okay. Then, substituting this and then doing the integration and substituting the limits. It results as 113.44 amperes. Okay. So, what is part B in this? Part B is find dou rho V by dou T. Okay. So, how to find dou rho V by dou T given a current density? So, we have to find out the uh, time rate of change of volume charge density. Okay. So, how to do this? That is, you know. From the current continuity equation, divergence of J, divergence of J is minus dou rho V by dou T. Okay. By using that, you can find out this dou rho V by dou T. Okay. So, by using just divergence of J, so it is in spherical coordinate system, this divergence of J is written like this, where dou rho V by dou T is minus divergence of J. So, it is minus of 1 by R dou by dou r of r into j r plus 1 by r dou by dou phi of j phi plus dou by dou z of j z. <coughs> this results in 0. Okay. So, here the time rate of change of volume charge density is 0. Next, uh, what is given in part c? Uh, part c is calculate the total current crossing the closed surface bounded by this area z equal to 0 z equal to 3, r equal to 1 and r equal to 6. Okay. So, here to find the current at 4 surfaces z equal to 3 between r 1 to 6 and phi 0 to 2 pi in az cap direction. What we are doing is i equal to over this surface area 0 to 2 pi r between 1 to 6. Then uh, the uh, radial uh, the z component is 10 by r square plus 1. R d r d phi if you do this integration it results in 91.66 amperes. Okay. Yeah. Then at z equal to 3 and r between 1 to 6 and phi between 0 to 2 pi over this surface the current i will result in minus 91.66. Okay. Further for a radius equal to 6 but z is varying and phi is varying that is in AR cap direction further current I will result in 30 pi amperes. Okay. Similarly 
uh, at r equal to 1 in the opposite end it will be i will result is minus of this it is minus 30 pi amperes okay so you have four surfaces uh, one will be nothing but it is in the z direction okay so you will have a positive z and the negative z components and then one will be along the radial direction one uh, plus ar direction one is minus ar direction okay so one will become 30 pi one will, another will become minus 30 pi one is minus 91 along z direction in opposite direction it will be plus 91 so if you add the total current will become zero it will get cancelled in the opposite ends it will get cancelled okay so this is the total current will result in zero further what is part d part d is is divergence of j into differential volume is equal to surface integral j dot ds this must be true we'll see whether it is uh, whether with the numerical calculation is it coming uh, same thing we'll see now divergence of j equal to zero okay uh, r here our volume charge volume integral divergence of j dv must be equal to zero okay so what is divergence of j we have got here we have got here divergence of j is zero okay so volume integral of this divergence of j volume integral of this divergence of j is zero here okay so further if you do volume integral it is nothing but volume integral it is nothing but zero even surface integral here we have got uh, current i is 0 so surface integral j dot ds also will be equal to 0 okay so this shows it is verifying the divergence theorem okay because we have got current i is nothing but surface integral j dot ds over the four surfaces by adding this again we are getting the total current enclosed is going out is 0 hence this left hand side is equal to right hand side it is obeying the divergence theorem first next we will consider the further eighth problem that is find the surface charge density at the plane boundary between two media across which current density is 7 ampere per meter square it is flowing normal to the surface if the if the constants of two media are conductivity sigma 1 epsilon 1 is given mu 1 and sigma 2 are given epsilon 2 and mu 2 are given okay we'll take this uh, solution we'll move on at the boundary between two media okay we know jn1 equal to jn2 which is nothing but 7 ampere per meter square okay also dn1 the normal components dn1 minus dn2 is equal to surface charge density because it is a dielectric medium where rho s is the surface charge density further we can say en1 equal to jn1 by sigma1 and en2 as jn2 by sigma2 that means dn1 is epsilon1 this this one epsilon1 into e1 and dn2 is epsilon2 into en2 okay so and by substituting this dn1 and dn2 in this equation it will become this epsilon1 jn1 by sigma1 minus epsilon2 jn2 by sigma2 equal to surface charge density okay so all the values are given here jn1 is there and jn1 is same as jn2 we can substitute that epsilon1 sigma1 and epsilon2 sigma2 are values are given by substituting that we get the surface charge density which is equal to 4.34 pico coulomb per meter square next we'll consider the 10th problem that is find the potential and electric field intensity for the region between two concentric right circular cylinders with v equal to 0 at ra equal to 1 mm and v equal to 100 volts at rb equal to 20 mm neglect fringing okay so there is two concentric cylinders uh, potential is given at uh, two positions okay uh, by uh, using laplace equation we can find out the uh, uh, potential and then the uh, finding potential and then uh, gradient of potential gives you electric field intensity okay so let us take this is the problem in uh, spherical or the you can also consider in cartesian sorry cylindrical system so in cylindrical system it is 1 by r 
dou by dou r of r into dou v by dou r equal to 0. Okay. So, and then integrating this twice potential v will become a into log r plus b where a and b are the constants. Okay. And using these two initial condition where r a equal to 1 mm at v equal to 0 and v equal to 100 volts at r b 20 mm by using these two initial conditions we can find out these constants a and b okay so where a and b constants are resulting with these two uh, unknowns and these two uh, initial conditions it is called by solving these two equations we are getting a and b value okay once you get the a and b value and substituting here potential v can be expressed as 33.3 log r plus 230 constant okay so once you get potential v you can find out electric field intensity where e is nothing but minus gradient of potential okay so it is minus dou v by dou r into a r cap so it will become log r differentiation is 1 by r so it comes as minus 33.3 divided by r a r cap this is the electric field intensity So, we'll let us take the 11th problem. The region between two conducting plates at x equal to 0 and x equal to d is filled with perfect, perfect dielectric of non-uniform permittivity epsilon equal to epsilon naught divided by 1 minus x by 2d. Find the solution for potential between the plates and obtain the expression for capacitance per unit area for the plates. Okay. The plates at x equal to d is maintained at a voltage of v naught and x equal to 0 is maintained at 0 potential. Okay. So, this is the data given. We have to find out, we have to find out uh, potential for uh, the potential between the plates. What is the potential between the plates? Okay. We know one thing electric field intensity E vector is minus del V. Our divergence of one more thing is divergence of D vector is volume charge density. Okay. So, divergence of epsilon into E can written as minus del dot epsilon dV or minus del square V is equal to rho V or uh, we can write one more thing using the identity. <coughs> divergence of scalar multiplied by a vector can be written as phi into del dot a plus a vector dot del phi. Okay? So, by using the divergence of epsilon into e can be written as epsilon del dot e plus e vector dot del of epsilon. Okay? Or further this can be reduced as epsilon del square v plus del uh, del into epsilon dot del v minus equal to minus rho v. Okay. For free charge distribution this equation will be reduced into epsilon del square v plus del epsilon dot del v equal to 0. Okay. Hence what it becomes? It will become uh, in if you take v is a function of only x you can rewrite the above equation as epsilon dou square v by dou x square plus dou epsilon by dou x into dou v by dou x equal to 0. Okay. So, further this equation will be reduced as d by dx of epsilon dv by dx which will be equal to 0. Okay. Integrating this equation with respect to x further it will become epsilon dv by dx equal to 0 or dv by dx is a by epsilon where a is constant. So, further again what is A? A is given as epsilon naught divided, uh, sorry, epsilon is given as epsilon naught divided by 1 minus x by 2d. Okay, by substituting that and then integrating with respect to x, b as a function of x will be written as A by epsilon naught x minus A x square by 4d epsilon naught plus b. Okay, so we have to find out these two constants A and b. Okay. So, what are the conditions given x equal to 0 uh, at uh, v equal to 0 and v equal to v naught at x equal to d. By substituting these two conditions we can find out what is a and b which is resultant in these two values. Okay. Hence the potential v can be expressed like this by substituting the constants a and b values. Okay. Then what is electric field intensity E? It is nothing but minus del V. Okay. 
So potential V is given differentiating this with respect to X and then multiplying by minus 1 result in electric field intensity. Further, once you get electric field intensity, you can find out the electric flux density because epsilon into E vector is nothing but the electric flux density. So if you get electric flux density, you can find out the surface charge density. It is nothing but a magnitude of this flux density. Okay. If you get surface charge density, you can find out the uh, capacitance by knowing the charge. Charge per unit area is nothing but this surface charge density. Further, capacitance per unit area is charge per unit area divided by the potential. So, potential already it is here and the charge is also is here by substituting this. The capacitance per unit area will result as 4 epsilon naught divided by 3 into D. So, let us consider the next problem that is consider the volume charge density in cylindrical coordinates as given in the problem with the find vector magnetic potential A in the region for R between A to B. Okay. So, there is a volume charge density distribution okay, where uh, the field in the region it is given as H vector equal to I. Uh, it is uh, I naught divided by 3A R, R cube minus A cube into A phi cap. Okay. So, B vector can be written as curl of A, where curl of A can be expressed in this manner. Okay. So, further by substituting the R phi uh, components, uh, we can find out the curl A. So, where you get the AZ component, okay. So, once you get differential Z component and then finding the total Z component, integrating over this one from R equal to A to R, you will get the vector magnetic potential A, okay. So, knowing the, knowing the field intensity, you are trying to find out the curl of A, not to find out the magnetic field intensity okay so where we are finding here the a vector knowing this one okay knowing this current uh, magnetic field intensity we are for trying to find out the magnetic vector magnetic potential by integrating it okay because here j is given the uh, h is given curl of a is nothing but Curl of A is nothing but H. Okay. So, D is, uh, DAZ component is nothing but DAZ by DR is nothing but this. Okay. And then integrating this, you will get only AZ component. Okay. It is very much a straightforward because J vector, sorry, H vector is nothing but curl A. So, curl A is nothing but DAR by DAZ by DR. If you take only the Z component okay so then you have to just integrate and find out the z component okay so further we will consider one thirteenth problem it is current element delta i into delta l is given uh, switched at a point find the incremental field delta h okay this is the in the beginning of uh, magnetic field intensity we have considered such problem where from the biot's hours law Delta H that is magnetic field intensity will be nothing but I dl cross AR cap divided by 4 pi R square. Okay. Current element is given and we just have to find out the unit vector. Unit vector is nothing but this 1 minus 4 from this point to this point. Okay. 1 minus 4, 3 minus of minus 2. Then this uh, 2 minus 3 by doing that we will get this unit the vector R. And the unit vector by uh, finding the vector by dividing by its magnitude, you will get the unit vector. Okay. So, and then taking the cross product, taking the cross product here, substitution and taking this cross product divided by 4 pi r square. If you do, you will get the differential magnetic field intensity. So much nano ampere per meter. Okay. So, this is the problem using Biot Sauer's law. Next we will consider one more problem that is there are two perfectly conducting planes of infinite extent in z direction are arranged 
at an angle of 30 degree bounded by cylindrical surface at rho equal to 0.1 it is given here and rho equal to 0.2 if this is at rho equal to 0.2 okay one plate is held at potential of one of the plate is held at potential of 1 kilo volt and the other is grounded find the potential distribution vector e and vector d in free space region between the plates and the capacitance per unit length of the system also find the energy stored in the system okay so we will take the laplace equation del square v equal to this it is equal to zero okay in the cylindrical system okay here since v is a function of only phi we will consider this one which will be equal to zero and then again integrating this one twice we will get potential v equal to some constant k1 into phi plus k2 where k1 and k2 are the constants okay then using these two condition phi equal to zero v is zero at phi equal to pi by 6 v equal to 1 kilo volt using this condition we can find out k1 and k2 okay with that we are getting potential v equal to 1909.86 phi okay so once you get the potential further it is electric field intensity which is nothing but minus del v okay so this del v where v is a function of only phi so it becomes e vector equal to minus 1 by rho dou v by dou phi into a phi cap just substituting and then differentiating with respect to phi the potential v we get the electric field intensity further if you multiply by epsilon you will get the electric flux density okay so magnitude of this electric flux density is nothing but surface charge density okay and the charge on the top plate per unit length will be written as rho this surface charge density multiplied by the differential surface area per unit length okay so integrating this with respect to rho and z okay where here it is uh, phi is constant this is a differential surface area for phi constant so it is d rho into dz integrating with respect to rho and z rho limit is 0 to 0.2 z limit is 0 to 1 by substituting that we will get the rho l value per unit length okay With this, I am um, stopping the lecture. We have done uh, some numerical problems, some problems we have considered on uh, magnetic flux density, magnetic field intensity, current density and the basic uh, problems like converting Cartesian to spherical and uh, so on. Okay, So, we can, you can work out more problems, something similar to this related to these areas. Okay, Thank you.